you want to have a I'll knock her out before she gets here. I'll beat you. I'll beat you. Come on, it. Come on. Ready for play. Bad start. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. This is what's coming up on today's show. However, I am joined on the sofas by two very red-faced, exhausted gentlemen, and also Gareth Jones, who is the managing director of Income. Welcome to the show, Gareth. Thanks for having me. Good we to see you, Gareth. We have to do something while well, we're waiting for you, you know. We have to <laughs> keep ourselves occupied. Hair and makeup that I have to. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to then? I think it's. Just um, give him a whooping at tennis. As well. Post, post with my racket. She eat the Cheat. ball hard though, yeah. Cheat, yeah. Cheat? That's because you've worked hard. Are you good at t uh, tennis, Gareth? Reasonable. 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 Have you been not as good as you. Not as good <laughs> <laughs> Have you been watching Wimbledon? Bits. A little bit, yeah. yeah, yeah. too busy working. Well, well. As is everyone. <laughs> okay then, Gareth, in calm. Um, yeah. For those who don't know who you are, I know we met you a few months back, but can you just yeah. tell uh, everyone who's watching what uh, income do? Yeah, so Incom offer qualifications, consultancy and courses to the engineering and manufacturing. Um, we've got seven sectors inside our business, all headed up by sector um, specific specialists. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> the ball boy interrupted. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> um, so we do everything from continuous improvement, safety, engineering, upskilling, technical, etc. Et okay, so who are you directly working with? Because you say consultancy, but also I'm thinking, you know, are you, are you training apprentices of yeah. certain ages? Yeah, so well, we've got different strands, as I've just said to the business, but yeah, predominantly 70% of our business is apprenticeship contracted. Um, so again, in the engineering manufacturing, we work from OEMs, um, so anything from first tier suppliers such as Gestamp, uh, IMI Norgren, down to your uh, small micro businesses, which you've got five people in. Are you at Ofsted registered? So yeah, we, we get Ofsted audited. We're in di we've got a direct contract with the Skills Funding Agency. Our contract's probably worth about £1.3 million per annum now. Um, and uh, fortunately enough to say, in, in March this year, 17, we got audited and we got outstanding across the board, grade ones. Mm -hmm. That's as good as um, you can get. You can't get any better. So each four elements that you get audited on, we've got outstanding in each one, which is rare. So um, that puts us, getting outstanding puts us in the top 12% mm. in the country. Having all outstanding puts us in the top eight. Wow. So if I, if I did a, the core of our audience is the small to medium enterprise engineering company. Yeah. <clears throat> How does this work for them? Talk us from the, the start to the finish. Mm. Do, do I take on somebody, get in contact with you, then send them to you, lose them for a year? How much does it cost me? Yep. Just so that if they're sitting there watching this, they can say, right, how do I, how do I get I engage like this? with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's, um, firstly, he's pick up the phone, make contact uh, website, however, that uh, in iphonecom.go.uk. Um, and then what we do is we go out into the businesses because the first thing we need to understand is do an organisational needs analysis to understand the business needs. It's not just a case of we want an apprentice and we'll give you an apprentice. Mm. We're outstanding for a reason, uh, and part of that is, is to ensure that what we're providing is needed, so otherwise it's not going to fall. So once we've gone in and done the audit, we'll work out where the, the, the skills gaps are, etc. And you, I mean, apprentices are a long-term recruitment strategy, they're not a short-term. So then if they need a toolmaker, we'll fill out the, um, like a job description, work out what they'll be doing here now, during their education, etc. And then we actually take that to market. So we place adverts, so we've got a, a recruitment team that sp specifically work just solely on recruiting apprentices for the employers. So it's not like we've got a pool of individuals that employers can come and pick out of. We actually go and recruit against the need of the company. So mm. people applying are actually applying for MTD's um, sales and marketing position. It's exactly I the same. I thought, I, say, I thought it was a secret. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's probably, as an employer, that's probably the hardest bit, isn't it, actually going to find mm. the right individual. So you take that off our hands, potentially. Yeah, and, to, and, and that's gratis. Interviews? Uh, um, so what we do is we put as much effort in up front to What's ensure... What's gratis? Free. Free. Oh, sorry. Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the only Spanish on <laughs> Um So, yeah, we place the advert. We shortlist on, on the, uh, the, the, the needs of the employer. Then we have them in. We skills audit them, aptitude tests on engineering, and then we formally interview them before the employer sees them. Only then do we allow them to go in front of the mm. employer. Because if we just wet some tissue, stick it at the wall and see what sticks, you you set up to fail before you've started. Mm. I, I think this is interesting because I mean, yeah. how many do you find? How many good people do you find? Often we hear that, that that youth of today aren't necessarily interested in engineering. They're interested in the types of things that we preach here. You know, digital media, marketing, social media. Yeah. So how do you how do you find um, the pool of you know people that you're actually? We we finding? put a hell of a lot of work in, um, especially going out to schools. Um, trying to show them the facilities, engage them going out into industry. So I'm a I'm an enterprise advisor for the local local enterprise partnership. So I partnered with the school, and part uh, part of that partnership is we take them out into industry and get the school engaged mm. into different industries to open their eyes so they can make a valid choice when it comes to making the right career yeah. choice for them. I, th I think that's good because when you talk about engineering, everyone thinks you're turning handles, you're wearing dirty overalls, but it's not like that anymore. No, 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 no. Even if you do want to sit behind a computer, look at the design engineers. Mm -hmm. But the difference is you've got to go and learn how to make it before you can go and design it. How many of these people do you find in a year? Oh, well, like I say, income, Aldridge has probably got about 450. Uh, the partnership with Salop in Shrewsbury, Salop Design and Engineering, to open uh, ITAS. We've probably got about 45 going through there at the moment. Average age? Uh, well, 16 to Easy 18 thing. predominantly. Yeah. Yeah, you Same do as get, Vietnam. Uh, <coughs> Same what? Sorry, carry on. <laughs> Night of but, 19, Joe. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, Gareth, moving on, what's the Marches? Okay, so the Marches, the MCMT, is the Marches Centre for Manufacturing Technology. It came about the local enterprise partnership in uh, Shropshire, or the Marches local enterprise partnership, mm -hmm. recognised there was a massive skill shortage, same was across the board, but there was no strong old specific private training provision in the Marches area that was a flagship where you could stick a flagpole in the ground and say, this is us. Mm -hmm. So you got the likes of some Stadco sending their apprentices from Oswald Street to the EF. So you can imagine so Oswald Street, Shrewsbury, Telford. Long way. Yeah, hell of a long way because yeah. there wasn't the, the specific mm -hmm. training provision or equipment in the local region to, region to support their strategy. So they got a group of employers together. Matt Nelson, as you can see on the screen now, from Granger and Worrell. So the four partners of that is Granger and Worrell, Classic Motor Cars, Salop Design and Engineering and Incom Training. We pulled together to uh, open the marches and then we placed a bid to the local LEP for some capital capital money, which we won. Uh, so we got 2.1 million in the end from the LEP. And then the other 1.9 million is all private investment. And we're opening, uh, which you'll probably see in a moment, 36,000 square foot of absolutely hardcore engineering manufacturing training. It is huge. What's there? Oh, uh, <laughs> turning, milling, fitting, drawing, CAD, metrology, uh, ramps, rolling roads, welding, um, spray robots, booth. spray booths. So engineers, you can train them up there any age from what we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. So yeah. someone who's maybe used to doing one job, maybe if it's an older engineer but wants to change and do something on another If it's supported by the company set. then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a press operator, a press set operator, that showed an aptitude for wanting to get into tooling and they've got an opportunity in the tool room, now because age doesn't matter with part of the funding, as long as they can release that person from their job, that can put them in here and we can teach them how to be toolies. Wow. We, uh, we go to a lot of these places, don't we? Different UTCs, universities, colleges. This place is going to be unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's huge. What we see here on the screen, it's actually Grange and Mole, which is next door. The, the current facility in Bridge North is empty. But it, when's that opening? Uh, the opening day is on the 29th of September 2017. Oh, we'll make sure we'll put all the details on the screen as well, and hopefully Fantastic. we'll be there. As well. Everybody's welcome. Yeah. Cool. So if I had a small that, engineering yeah. company in that area, yeah. and I was looking for uh, two, four apprentices, I could yeah. tap into that into that. Place, Absolutely, into yeah. We'll, we'll come out and visit. And then you'll have lots of these around the country. Is, 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 yeah, is that's the future. Inside these as well, we're also putting incubators. 
So when we're integrating Industry 4, we're looking at applications engineering, people can come and test, uh, test out new technologies, processes, systems, uh, product development. If I was that guy there, how much is it going to cost me? Mm. Okay, so we're opening a manufacturing club where people can come and use the expertise of the equipment, technologies and the intellectual property of the people. And that's going to be £200 a week. Right. Um, but that's a full day, it's including all materials and advice and guidance as well to come and start testing. It's R&D really for the SME. Mm. So it's like a bit like a gym membership? Yeah, correct. So for yeah. that money, am I, am, I, am I limited to one visit or how, how does that work? Uh, it, well, we, we said that we're going to run it every Friday to keep the centre open every Friday for all SMEs to come in. But if that doesn't suit an SME, we're about working with people. Mm. So if that doesn't suit somebody, well, they need it on a, to suit them basis, mm -hmm. then we'll, you know, we'll manipulate that to work. The, the, there is one other interesting thing I'd like to ask, is that a, a lot of this comes down to, to politics, government funding. Yeah. Uh, you know, we know that since 2010, there's been a lot more investment in apprenticeship programmes. Um, what would happen in the event that, let's say, towards the end of this year, there was a general election and there was a change in government yeah. uh, and there was a different, different belief? Yeah. Does that affect you? We're heavily uh, affected by government, heavily, because that, that's where the, the strategy goes. If you look at the Labour government, it was all about fr free degrees. Not the band. Was yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was all about going to university and get, getting degrees, coming out with degrees. No emphasis on vocational training whatsoever. Where the, the Conservative or the Coalition first started off, it was Vince Cable um, with the Lib Dems. Then all of a sudden, this emphasis on actually there's two quality routes to get into your chosen career path, and they should stand as much weight as each other. You know, your opportunities to go to go on and do a degree, you should be able to do that from an apprenticeship just as mm, you would do sure. doing your A-levels. And if you come from a level two qualification straight the way through to a level six qualification through to degree, surely you'll be, end up being a better engineer coming through the practical element, mm, manual, sure. working your way up through to, to the technical mm. engineering. For, for me, I look at this as you, you must have a plan. Uh, yeah. you, you, you know, where are you, if you're looking in five years' time, uh, how many apprentices would you expect to be seen annually then? And how many, call it, academies or areas of training would you so, expect? So when these academies are, the, let's just talk about the, the three that we've got now, the fully equipped apprenticeship ones. When they're, when they're flying, you're going to be talking at least, I would say, in the region of 1,000 to 1,400 apprentices a year, which you think about that. And that's just Shropshire mm. in the black country. So you can see the emphasis and we're yeah. going to be churning out And that's still not enough, money. is it? It's still not yeah. enough. And there's more job opportunities than there is individuals. So if anybody's listening from industry, by the way, please open your doors to school kids so they can come and see the fantastic things that are going on. Because that's what we need to do. They need to come out, get involved, you know, whether it's casting, CNC machining, whether it's aeroplane wings, you know, they, they need to come and get, get a spark for mm. this, really. So in answer to that question then, Gareth, uh, what are we talking, 10,000? Could you expect to have 10,000 apprentices on the books in five years' time? I think five years may be ambitious. I think we'll probably have maybe 10 to 12 centres open in five years. But for them to take time and embed, we'd up to probably at the 10, 12,000 mark maybe in the, the next decade. But we need that though, don't we? I mean, it's great what you're and doing more, because we, we, we... Yeah, yeah, more. Well, if you think at the minute we've got over 60,000 square foot of solid engineering manufacturing training, and we're just going to keep adding on that. So the partnership with ETG, so Norton's Technical Academy opens on the 20th of July this year. And we've already identified at least another four places to actually open in partnership um, apprenticeship facilities. So, so obviously with ETG, with the machine tooling, us and a, a industrial partner as well. Because that's what we're here. We're here to give industry the leg up to achieve its growth strategies, we said mm. earlier. So we only exist because of them. So without them, we wouldn't. So it's about giving them what they need. Mm. So yeah, it's going to be uh, an it's intense all, couple of years. It's, it's all very times. inspiring for apprentices as well, what you do. You, you know, it's all yeah. very encouraging as well. Well, it's about passionate. The, the fact that we have an awards evening once a year. We have 300 mm. come to that now. And it's about celebrating their achievements. I remember mm. the winner this time. All his family were crying. There was people up applauding. There was probably 50 people around it's the stage. It's because they wanted him to be a doctor. Well, <laughs> <laughs> The joking aside, awesome. manufacturing engineering, it's it's a good career, isn't it? Also, oh, if you want to save a life, great, be a doctor, be a vet. But if not, it's probably the best there is, isn't it's it? It's outstanding. It's good money. It's absolutely you know, outstanding. Something. It's a quality it's a quality sector to be in. And, and now you're knee deep in it. We're gonna put you on the spot here because we're gonna we're gonna run our call it cycle time challenge. I visited an engineering company uh, in the last few days and we're gonna play oh, a video. Okay. 
and we're going to look at a part that's being machined and we're going to ask everybody in the usual style how quickly we think it's manufactured. Oof. Cycle time challenge. Lee, what do you do on a Friday evening when you get home from work? First thing I do is put swarf and chips on. Me and my lads sit there and watch it. Okay, well we're featuring your business this week. This is Interface Precision Engineering. Yep. Very quickly, let's try and do this in about 30 seconds. What, what do you do here? We are a subcontract engineering company specialising in high-end, high-precision quality items from a range of materials from aluminiums right through to stainless steels, titanium, tantalum, right the way through, all, all grades. And you're based in Hastings. This is one of your latest acquisitions, the Star SR20 R. Uh, R4 Type B, correct? That's absolutely correct, yeah. Nine axis machine, yes. 22 mil bar capacity you got? To? That's it, 22, 22.2, 7 eighths diameter bar capacity, yeah. Done wonders for your company, and the, and the challenge back in the, off, uh, back in the uh, studio today is to look at this part that we got here. Yeah. I want you to tell us, Lee, how you were doing this. I don't want you to tell us how fast it is now, but how, how long it was taking you and how you were doing it. Okay, we were doing this in various operations, starting on a uh, manual machine and finishing it off on a traditional one, uh, one spindle CNC machine. Um, it was taking us five operations, um, with threads on the end, each end, and a milling operation with a well prep there. Um, it was taking us around 12 minutes plus the uh, loading time, manual loading time. And you took that off, uh, off out of that cell, call it, and you've brought it onto the yeah. star sliding head lathe. Yeah. I'm going to put this back to the audience again. How, how long was the machining time on this altogether in, uh, that, in that way? In the original way? Yeah. Okay, 12 minutes. Okay, and that's just machining time. That's, that's just not all machining. The... It's just machining time. Obviously, you've got that. That's 12 minutes of manned production. So you've got the loading time on top of that as well. And just quickly, material? Um, 316 stainless steel. Okay, 316 stainless. This part was 12 minutes machining time plus handling. How quick do we think that Lee is making that now at interface precision on his new star sliding head lathe? So what do you reckon, Gareth? You go I'm going to say 1 minute 45 seconds. Wow, but you saying that, think of the reduction you're talking, 12 minutes down to one minute, that's yeah, massive. Yeah. I was surprised it was only 12 minutes for the five different processes. Yeah, yeah um, I can't see the detail on the end, a million unfortunately, but I'm going to go with 92 oh seconds, God. but it could be less, depending on how, how many? 92 Two. seconds. So what's yeah. that? Very specific. Very specific. Minute one minute and, and 32 seconds. Now remember, one minute you... 45 oh, seconds. Oh, no, I was going to say it would be funny if it was the same, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can guess the cycle time and you can comment in the uh, comments on YouTube, and the winner. Uh, whoever's closest will be announced next week. And, and you'll get a prize. And you'll get a prize. Get a so prize. we're not going to tell you now. You need to watch next week's show uh, to find out. You two, you need to go off to techno technology corner Where? now. Technology okay. corner. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth, good to All see you. All the best, James. Good to see you. See you soon. See you here. See you in September. Got a tennis racket. Oh, absolutely. You'll be better than them. Man of the moment. He's <laughs> <laughs> used to a protection racket. Gareth, thank you so much, and for all of our swarf and chips uh, you uh, guests, much. you get a mug. And thank, thank you, you because you're our first guest that has now appeared twice on swarf and chips. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Cheers. Technical corner. Hello, welcome to today's technical corner, Paul. We're going to be talking about the SR32J from Star today. I know it's a very popular machine, but it's had a bit of an overhaul, hasn't it? So, what's new? Uh, yeah, there's been uh, significant increases in power on this machine, as Alec told us, uh, 40, up to 40% in some areas. And that's not just the power, 40% in, uh, increases in the RPM on the spindles, but not just on the main and the sub-spindle, but also on the driven tools. They've also got uh, the claim of 40% uh, up upgrades on more accuracy as well, which comes as a result of things like the build quality of the machine, because it's far heavier and, re and really I think some of the the points that that Alec tried to make on this video that are different is there is a type A and a type B the type B machine now offers you y-axis machining on the sub spindle which as you know gives you much mm -hmm. more flexibility for your for your milling but overall they've taken a very popular machine which is the SR32J and, and added a few enhancements in order to probably satisfy the same market that bought the previous mm -hmm. machine but also extend it slightly into a, into newer markets maybe where maybe people mm -hmm. have got more complex parts for the y-axis maybe more challenging materials 
But it, but what some of the interesting points that I also picked up on this from Alec talking is they, they have gone the, the extra mile with this kind of rigidity and this and this bigger structure with things like going f from ER16 collets up to ER20. Mm -hmm. So all, all of these things, when you do one thing, you, you, you need to you need to. I add guess it. I guess if you've got the extra torque, extra speed, extra power, you need to put bigger tools down to get the benefit. Yeah, and what, what's interesting as well is about the, the speed of this machine. You, you're looking, I think, something like 8,000 RPM on the mm. on the main and the sub spindle. So you've got extremely high speeds there for turning. The tool mm. configuration has slightly changed. You can get more tools on the machine. Uh, certainly from a back working perspective mm -hmm. so there has been quite a few enhancements to the uh, to this SR32J2. And I know like all stars it comes with a fanet control this is a 32i but I understand even that's been updated there's more add-ons as well. Yeah it's, it's worth going to to Derby to staff to to go and not just see the machines but learn about some of the software that's on the control as well mm -hmm. because sliding head technology is about taking components from that, that mm. maybe m were made in 50 seconds down to 40, because that 10 second cycle time saving is huge. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that their control do, will you, you can create a program and it will optimize the path of the machine in process in order mm -hmm. to maybe take a second or two seconds or three seconds out of the cycle time. You times that by 10,000 components, you've got a massive, mm. massive saving. Yeah, and the, the control also manages tool life better, doesn't it? You can do it on a part count or a time count as well now. So. Correct. And also, like we talk about a lot on the on the show, this machine is also a, a guide brush and non guide brush mm -hmm. machine, so you can go from one to the other. Again, it gives you so much more flexibility from an application uh, perspective, and you can go up to thirty five millimeters in bar diameter. Mm -hmm. Although it's a thirty two millimeter standard, there are options mm -hmm. to take you up to that bar diameter. So there's two things on this. F first one, it scares me. This this isn't even top of the range, is it? The parts that come off it, it's a job to know if it's come off a turning centre, a sliding head, um, or you know a machining centre. And and secondly, just ask you to wrap up. You know, what, why is this so much better than its predecessor? Well, th firstly, I think you make an important point about it's not their most um, sophisticated machine, or for making the most complex of components. Star have a very very diverse range, right the way from a from a small kind of ten mil type machine up to over 40 mil now uh, bar diameter for sliding head turning which is pretty much unheard of in this marketplace this particular model yeah for me to summarize this if you if you know of an sr32 j or you've got a 32 mil sliding head lathe you're looking for something with a little bit more power more tools to give you more flexibility uh, higher speeds on on not just on your main and sub spindles or second spindle but also on your driven tools uh, and you're looking for guide bush and non guide bush machining this is a solution definitely has to be something that you should consider mm. great many thanks i've learned a lot again mtd on location sorry can't be in the studio guys uh, i'm here at ncmt the gear manufacturing seminar why are you running this richard Hi there, Mark. Yes, um, well, we're running this because really there's been a big focus, a big change in the market, especially for us with Akuma. Um, there's a lot of interest now with gears being manufactured on multitasking machines. The idea is, is you can do multiple things on that machine. So you can turn it, you can mill it, and now you can gear cut it. But also with power skiving, power skiving is a big push. Reason being is because the synchronization of the two spindles has not been that possible in the past. But with Akuma, they developed an encoder that is by far the best with 36 million increments on it so you know it is wow and and the portfolio of uh, akuma machines are, are they all related to gear manufacturing uh, there's a lot there's a lot of gear manufacturing machines on there there's some that aren't obviously but there is a lot so a lot of these machines now they're trying to push different manufacturing methods on various different machines that uh, different machines so things like shaping your power skiving your hobbing and now with the assistance of sambit we can also do the invo method and you've got two days, this has been packed out, how about tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow, I think the number's supposed to be even more, you know, it's supposed to be a big, big event tomorrow, so yeah, it's going to be good. So really, the, the idea is to raise the brand of Akuma, it's, it's round sort of gear cutting to a certain extent? Yeah, I think, like as I said before, because of, we Akuma's come on leaps and bounds, you know, with their technology themselves, the hardware and the software, we want to try and push that out to the market, you know, we want to try and make it big. And, you know, from other results that we've seen so far, they have been phenomenal, so it is looking good. Great, thanks very much, Richard. Well, back to you guys in the studio. Um, I suppose we're gearing it up here. See you later. MTD Network. Guys, I've popped into a hidden gem in Brightlington in Essex. It's CJS CNC Machining. First of all, thanks for tongue twister for a name, Chris. <laughs> yeah, it takes a bit of getting around, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now, we've had a quick look around the machine shop. What types of machines you got? Uh, CNC mills, CNC lathes, and manual stuff as well. 
and a little honing machine, which is for hand finishing, really. Okay, and having a conversation with you earlier, I think key to what you do, it's not the latest five axis high-end machines that you use, is it? No, we haven't got the all sing and dance and five axis stuff, but um, we, we sort of specialize in maybe reverse engineering sometimes. We've um, taken on some jobs that originally been cast and we're now making them out of solid to get better quality basically. So we specialize in sort of that little bit extra, the hand finishing, making sure everything is right and working right. Yeah, I think that's highlighted by this fantastic selection of components on here. But just quickly, in terms of industries, any industry really that you cover? Any industry, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll have a go at anything. Yeah. If we've got the gear to do it, then um, we'll have a look at it and have a go at it, yeah. yeah. Same with materials. So any industry is in any material. So really any challenge where you want to add value and utilize the experience of yourself and the guys in the machine shop? Yeah, I mean, that's what engineering is about. It's a challenge all the time. Every day is a new challenge, really. And I mean, I've been absolutely amazed by the selection of components you've got in there. They're really, really fantastic. But um, you talk about this one. This used to be cast, is that right? So why, yes. why are you now machining it? Well, because the, we were getting problems with the castings being porous, and we were finding that we were finished machining, and then we would get blowholes, and we were ending up having to sleeve some bores and what have you. And really, that was taking longer than if we made the whole thing from solid. And the other advantage is, is that if the customer only wants five or ten off components, it's a lot cheaper than him getting them cast. So a great example, really adding value and getting the cost down for the end client. Yep. What about, you know, this, this looks relatively straightforward, this part? Yeah, that's um, a, a prototype part we made. It, um, I can say it's not relatively straightforward, is it? You told me off that, earlier for saying no, that. No, no, it's, it, it, it wasn't straightforward. It's, um, it, it's basically a lump of nylon that we, uh, we all machined out. And again, a load of components fit in here. And we did uh, three or four of these as prototypes. And now I, I believe they're being cast in um, or, or extruded in plastic. So um, yeah, that, that was a challenge, that one. Chris, great, well, sort of almost hidden gem, CGS CNC machining down in Brightling. So thank you for showing us this. It's really, really impressive stuff. Guys, back to you. Chip Chat. Ready? So this week's highlights, you've got three minutes, so you've got to keep it precise. So uh, Mazak went to Staffordshire Precision. This would be a really good place to film, wouldn't it? Yeah, they've recently purchased a BTC uh, 800SR, which is actually a European design and manufactured machine. And it's already paying for itself, essentially. They've always made smaller components of Staffordshire Precision, but due to the nature of the 800SR, the travelling column style of machine, they can do much larger uh, aerospace type work and yeah it's, it's paying dividends from day one. Have you said that machine is, is like say travelling column the yeah. tool changer moves with a head so it's very mm -hmm. quick to go from from part to part you can have one part one end one part of the other total versatility and I get that's why mm. staffs have bought it don't want to move on without saying they turn over three million pounds and they've got 49 people which is a huge um, and they're trying to increase it too isn't it five million over the next few years yes. or something? Yeah and, and then here's another great business DKW I thought that was a gum shield he was holding there but actually I did. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I thought it's, it's one off my car and yeah. that, but that's another business business that has gone through tremendous growth in recent years. This video, I, I do like this one, Joe, the, the feeler machine. Also mm -hmm. like the way we, we, we looked at the layman table on this. It's a five axis solution really, isn't it? Yeah, well, it was an intriguing video. Quite often we're invited into a company when somebody's just purchased a machine tool. This machine is over two years old actually. But it's the fact, the, the story is, is that over two years, it runs every day and some evenings as well. And it's had zero downtime. So you invited us oh, in. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So he invited us in to uh, basically endorse the machine, which is good. Zero downtime, excluding setup and all of those oh, times yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, Pollock Lift. Yeah, this is a great one. The, the, these guys are actually now selling, uh, they, the big market is residential mm. lifts. So when you look at a lift normally, you think about it going into, I don't know, your supermarket or somewhere like that. But actually these lifts now are now mm. being installed in people's houses. And I thought it would be great for you, Joe. Would you like well, one? It, <laughs> yeah. but it's a tough market, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's, it's up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're chewing up my time. They manufacture all, all of their, it's all done in-house on their Victor machining cell, every part, all the fabrication, all the machining. They used to sub it all out, but they bought it all back in-house because they wanted more control, and that is... Yeah. Uh, an example anyway, of one. stop talking pollocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you also, Paul, didn't you have a drink as well? And um, when you went somewhere and you actually saw one of the... the oh, we did, yeah, 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 but I don't want to say anymore. Yeah, we don't so, want to go into that yeah, one. <laughs> So yeah, uh, we've also done a video at Interform for, uh, for Tebis. 
They've uh, never used CAD CAM before. Well, uh, they bought the CAM solution from Tebis, and it was a CNC trimming like we see here. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to digitise their way around a part, which could take half a day, even a day sometimes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, that's a big saving, isn't it, Lindsay? Mm. And when you go around, there's lots of these components lying around. It tends to be fairly low volume, this process. You're doing a lot of setup. So it paid for itself in no time at all, essentially. It's the first CAM solution I've ever had, so they were a bit, you know, a bit nervous about getting into the, the, into the CAM world. But the, do they make tools there as well? Yeah, they do, yeah. Yeah, they do everything there. And the, so do they use Tebis for making correct. it? Correct, yeah, 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 correct, yeah. So they've used te a Tebis and they go from a half day till 30 minutes? Yeah, as I say, the, the guys have never used CAD CAM before, so mm -hmm. in, in a couple of days train, they're up yeah. and away. Oh. Right, there you go, perfect timing, thank you, thank you. We've, we've got quite good at this, haven't we now? All the videos will be live on the website and you can watch them all in full. So next up, special offers. Deal of the week. It's got the MV1200R, it's a new machine to MTD, it's also the offer of the week. Why is an engineer going to buy this machine? Uh, Mitsubishi represent 33% of the market share worldwide for a very, very good reason. Good stable build quality, tubular drive technology and fantastic efficiency with, when we talk about wire consumption and general cutting performance. Mm -hmm. So how is that an advantage? Presumably buying a machine is one thing, but there's obviously an on cost when you install it at your factory. That's right, Joe. Mitsubishi have developed something called the digital anti-electrolysis. Everybody has anti-electrolysis, everybody has digital generators. But what this does, it actually slows the wire speed down and enables us to give a more straighter cut on the first cut, mm -hmm. meaning that we can make massive consumption savings in wire uh, chippings, mm -hmm. which has a significant reduction in the running cost of the machine, because this is your biggest running cost of the machine. And what is that as a percentage, roughly? Uh, you're looking at probably about 80% of your running cost is actually wire. Uh, th then we're looking at electricity and pumps and those kind of things. So we're fitting the machine with inverter pumps. Uh, the tubular drive technology is also very, very low power consumption. And the generator performance, as you ex expect from someone like Mitsubishi, is fine-tuned to give the best efficiency for the power input. So it's efficient. The, uh, the ongoing run costs are going to be reduced. Does that mean my parts are going to come off slower? Absolutely not. Again, what the way the technology is uh, moved forward, it means that when we have to do less cuts, uh, we can get the uh, part off uh, actually quicker. But even when we're just talking about a rough cut, there's no compromise in cutting speed. Are these some of the parts that have been produced on the machine? Yeah, the machine has a seven axis control, uh, which means that you can uh, retrofit any time an AB axis should you need to. Uh, there's no factory option for that. Uh, also, the machine has something called core hold, which enables us to cut round a part and actually weld the part in, saving massive time for detagging in the morning. I know a lot of these extras are exactly that. You have to pay extra. Do you, with Mitsubishi? Uh, that's all included on this particular model, the MV1200R. OK, and it's to say it's off of the week, so it's X stock here from HK Technology. Yes, the, the machine is available from stock. And in fact, over the next three months, uh, we've got some special offers uh, with the factory. Uh, so if anybody wants to bring down their parts, take a look, we'd be more than happy to accommodate them. Thanks for watching this week's Wharf and Chips. Now, if you want to get involved in the competition, put your guess of the part cycle time in the comment boxes below and join us next week where we will be announcing the winner. Whilst you're at it, like and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. <laughs> <laughs>